Absolutely. All right. Let me press record and we'll get started. You're listening to another ambitious entrepreneur network.com podcast, the voice for entrepreneurs and small business. Now onto the show. Welcome to the Christian Entrepreneurs Podcast, daily conversations with Christian entrepreneurs to inspire and empower Christian business owners to walk strongly in their faith, while build a thriving business that honors him in every way. Now, over to your host, Anne-Marie Cross. And welcome to another episode of the Christian Entrepreneurs Podcast. This is episode 232, brought to you by Podcasting with Purpose helping you to stand out, be heard, and become an influential voice in your industry with a podcast. I'm your host, Henry Cross, the podcasting queen. My guest today says you and God cannot fail. And joining me on today's show is Rachel Reaver. Rachel is a global media strategist. She's a writer, a success coach. She's also the founder of Life on Her Terms. Now, she has got such an impressive background. She's worked in the media industry for 10 years as a news publicist. She was also been a PR manager and her career has spanned television, health policy and election campaigns, both in Australia and in the United Kingdom. Now, Rachel's business is about empowering women to fulfill their purpose and help world-changing entrepreneurs to tell their story authentically and connect with clients and media. Now, on today's show, Rachel is going to share why surrendering to God's will and vision for her life was the only way that she achieved real success that she desired versus what she thought she wanted. I think we can all relate to that, Rachel. She's also going to talk about the attitude of authenticity will bring forward the people you are meant to work with and the opportunities you are meant to have. She's also going to talk about a constant state of leaping is the only way you'll achieve success that's meant for you. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me, and marie I'm very excited to be here. Oh, look, you are so very welcome. Tell me, how did you get into the industry that you, uh, you know, global media strategist, but also working in uh, the the television, the health policy and election yeah. campaign? There's some fantastic experiences <laughs> there. How did you get into that? Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, so I studied communications. I did PR and journalism. Um, I was always interested in telling stories and writing. And I started, I mean, the first full-time job I could get, to be honest, was actually working for the Australian Medical Association. So that was health lobbying, which I found really interesting. And then I went from that and got my first job in TV, which was as a news publicist. And I wasn't all that sure what a publicist was, to be quite honest. But it really, um, it was about telling stories, but it, it gave me a really amazing behind behind the scenes view of what it took for people to really succeed in that type of industry. Wow. So I went in and I thought I had a bit of a tough skin. It turns out, particularly in news, I had to build a much thicker skin uh, because you've got deadlines, you've got, it's a bit quite male dominated industry. There are a lot of, there are a lot of women, but the, the people at the top when I was there was a lot of men. So you had a lot of strong personalities and you had to be quite assertive. Mm. And so um, I, I loved it and I learned so much from it. And I think one of the reasons I can, you kind of look back on your you know, background and you go, God put me there so that I could see the entire picture. And, you know, as well as learning writing skills and how to promote a program and how to deal with talent and difficult people, you know, he was really giving me this kind of over overarching view of, you know, some people say they may want to be in the limelight, but when you look at what it really takes to be there and the issues they have to face, I just felt so kind of grateful. And I just kept kind of going there. Like I loved news and mm -hmm. I felt it was, you know, I think it goes back to the authenticity and telling real stories. Mm -hmm. And um, so I went from S Yes, then worked for the ABC and I worked on election campaigns and then I ended up in London and um, worked for the BBC there too. Yeah. So, I mean, God really blessed me. Like I had a lot of favor, but I was always looking for the next step, like yeah. always. So, yeah. Yeah. And I think when you think of uh, looking at entrepreneurship and business, there are a lot of hats, there are a lot of moving parts, there are a lot of challenges, ups and downs. And I think you need to have a thick skin too, particularly if you launch something didn't quite work out, but it's just part of the part of the entrepreneurship game and, and journey. So let's talk about why surrendering to God's will and vision for your life was the only way that you really achieved real success. 
that you desired versus what you thought that you wanted. I think so many of us can relate to that. What was your story? Absolutely. Um, Like, I guess, anybody else, I had this idea of what I wanted for my life and career. I was very career focused and oriented. And I just kept looking at, okay, well, I want to be manager by 30 or want to be, you know, this and that. And um, so I, to be honest, I kind of kept, kept going every two years. I was either moving jobs or moving positions. Um, And it was when I was about 27 years old that I realized I had a great job. I was working at the ABC. Um, I really was doing really well, was earning really good money. You know, I, I had all the boxes ticked. But something was missing and I ignored it for a while. I ignored it as long as I kind of could. And that's when kind of London came on the scene because I knew I needed a really big change. And my boyfriend, now husband, he was off of the job there. And I basically sold everything, got rid of everything at 27 and went to London. And that was a, that was one of my first leaps, I'd say, because I didn't have a reason to. Like I had a really good life set up you know, in Sydney. And, but I just felt this like urge, you know, that burning urge of I've got to do something else. This isn't, this isn't fitting me anymore. And I don't know why. And so of course I try and figure it out myself and go, well, okay, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to get my dream job at the BBC. That's what I'm going to do. And as we know, what you speak comes into your future. I have people saying to me, girl, that's going to be tough, you know, but God, again, with God's favor, those doors were open for me. Um, I, I did a lot of hustling before I got there, but within six weeks, I landed a job at the BBC as a news publicist when they also had an election campaign happening. So, you know, door, things were just, I mean, God was so good to me at that time. But on my very first day at the BBC, and I love the BBC, I'm a huge fan, this is no reflection on them, but I literally had like the worst first day ever. It was like, it was like a 15 hour day. It was so bad. And I remember walking out the door and, you know, at BBC studios, it was like late at night and I went home, I got a burrito, a bottle of wine and chocolate. And I was like, I don't want to do this anymore. Mm -hmm. It was the same job. It was the same issues. It was just with an amazing logo and an incredible company that I'd always wanted to work with. And given the fact that I'd kind of given up <laughs> everything and moved over and thinking, this is going to be the answer. This is going to, win. this is going to make me feel good. This is going to make me feel successful and, you know, um, and meet that, that emptiness I was feeling. I mean, that was scary because I went into full on classic career crisis of what am I meant to do? So, you know, I didn't, I didn't do anything at that point. I stayed there and I worked and I was like, well, you know, you're kind of here now. What do you do? And tried to fix it again myself, decided, I, you know, I just need a better job that works, um, that maybe I just need a break from television. So I went and worked for the NHS, the National Health Service, worked in government, worked in health again, got more money, managed a team, and I was even more miserable. Mm. And it was finally about a year and a half after that, I just, I remember going home and going, God, I don't care what I have to do. I don't care how long I have to wait, but I am not doing one more thing until I know what you have meant for me because I've tried it myself and I'm done. Like I was at that point. And I think it was at that point of my version of success was climbing the ladder, climbing the ring, become a manager, get more money, you know, um, and it just wasn't working for me anymore. I had it all and it just wasn't working. That was, that was kind of it. So I remember, you know, having that kind of moment with God and, and saying to myself, you were going to study yourself. And for the next few weeks, you were just going to study anything that is of interest to you. You're going to figure, you're going to figure out your purpose and you're gonna, that is all that you're going to do. Two weeks later, I don't want to say I discovered coaching, but it kind of came up and it was so clear to me, you're meant to start your own business. And that's kind of where it all started. Like, that's just where it went. And within a few months, I'd signed up to a program um, and it was scary. It was like, there was no reason for me to do that, but I was kind of still working full time. So that was about a year and a half ago now. And I mean, things have just kind of gone since then, but there was just, you know, the leap, but also just that surrendering to God of going, this isn't working for me. And I'm so tired of trying to figure this out myself. Mm -hmm. And while I didn't want to give up the security of a 12 year career that I'd built up, Mm -hmm. I was so unhappy and it was leaking in every part of my life. It can't not. So that's where it started. Yeah. Uh, Thank you for sharing that. I think, as I said earlier, I think all of us can relate to that because there's aspects of who we believe we need to be, you know, obviously wordly and what we're told from business success and so forth. And that wraps itself around our identity. But when we do surrender and we recognize that, you know what, what do you say, Lord, where do you want me to be? 
we realize that when we do allow our will to be aligned with his, and I love that Bible verse, you know, delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. A lot of things that you have learned and experienced and the wealth and depth of knowledge never goes to waste. God kind of says, you know, well, we'll bring that in to what you're doing now, but far more aligned, far more fulfilled. What do you think was the biggest insight then around, you know, your identity? Because let's face it, you know, the drive, the ambition, and this is obviously a healthy ambition. It's still there, but it's now refocused. What's happened for you? Yeah, I think one of the things I I didn't even realize that I had was I cared so much about what people thought, and I didn't think I did. And it sounds so like high school girl cliche, but I remember having such a fear of coming out Mm. of actually, I've decided to do something completely different. And I mean, I had girlfriends who were going for senior roles that I would have gone for. And there's a humbling in this process and a a coming undone that I honestly did not expect because I thought I had a healthy uh, you know, a healthy confidence and all this kind of stuff. I'll tell you what my confidence was in. It was in knowing I could get a job where I kind of wanted to. It was in that career. It was it, it was in the business card. It was in that, oh yeah, I'm dealing with talent and I'm, you know, going to be on this show next week or whatever it is, you know. I, I really thrived in that and I didn't realize how much of my identity was really in that. And of course I trusted God, but kind of over here, you know, <laughs> it's like I trusted God. But, you know, I'm doing this now. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, I'm not sure if that answers your question so much. But for me, it was really about my identity and having to, like you said, realign myself into what he had called me to. And, you know, even when I started, I said I was going to, you know, coach women and help with them with their careers, you know, changing kind of like I had. And that even had to, I would say that had to change, but that has changed a bit as well, because I realized the gifts that God had given me that he imparted to me, particularly around messaging and copywriting and the PR that I thought I was getting away from, it's, it's come back because I realized actually, what am I doing? I had people coming to me with these, you know, with these problems that I could really help with. And it was like, I've, you know, God for 12 years built that for me, like, you know, gave me those, gave me that experience. And so even coming around to not the idea of what I thought I would be as a coach or what kind of business I thought I would have, you know, being open to those changes and just kind of going to where the doors are opening for you versus where, you think you should go. And so for me, it's been a constant humbling experience and um, having to constantly check in with, is this my ego making a decision here? Or is this God whispering to me? And sometimes I have to really check in with that. Yeah, I think we all do. And I think no matter, even in our own business, you know, again, we can put our identity in that project, in that proposal that we put forward. And there are things, there are disappointments that happen. And I think when we really come to that realization that no matter what happens, the ups, the downs, the in-betweens, if we center and put our foundation of our identity on who Christ says we are, uh, then we will never fail because no matter what happens, you know, we've got that that center, that that core, which is just so important, such a great reminder. Let's talk about something else that you want to speak into. And this is around the attitude of authenticity. And you say, this is going to bring forward the people that you're meant to work with and the opportunities that you are meant to have. Isn't it funny that when we start to release and surrender, things will often start to flow, but it's getting to that stage where we are able to embrace the attitude of of authenticity. And of course, that surrendering. Share a bit more about this. Absolutely. Um, I think in my own career, I'll I'll just talk a little bit bit about this. I'm a girl from a Southern town, from a small town in Georgia. I had no reason to work in television or do anything of the things that I've done. And I would constantly kind of try and be like, hide who I was, where I was from or what I was doing or that kind of thing. And I finally, and I finally kind of got tired of it. And I realized when I started bringing, like being myself, it's really simple things like bringing brownies to work. I know this sounds, you know, bringing brownies to work or just actually saying what I thought instead of constantly just being like, Ooh, I don't want to say that because I don't want them to think I'm just this or that, or even sounding Southern or whatever it was. People started really engaging with me and really seeing who I was. Mm-hmm. And I think for a while I had this idea, particularly with women, I've noticed this, we do this, obviously, you know, we're not as comfortable talking in meetings or whatever it is, but it's like, you do not have to be aggressive to get your point across. You do not have to act like a man. You don't have to act like anybody else. You can be you and still get acknowledged and still get promoted and still have that engagement with people. And I, you know, so I kind of figured that out at work. When I started my business though, oh my gosh, I don't, I don't want to be known as this Christian 
business owner. I don't want people to think I'm just a Christian kind of a person. So I hid that for a while. And then I had, um, I, I had one day, I can't even remember what happened, but I was saying to God, what is it that you want me to share? And it was, it was a spiritual message. He wanted me to share it. I'd never really done that with my audience. I'd shared a lot about messaging or just general self-help stuff. And it was really confronting to me because I was like, I don't know how this is going to go down. Mm -hmm. And I rocked up with this message and it was, it was really just something about surrendering and letting go and God and all that kind of stuff. And I got such great feedback. But from that, I had two clients come to me and, um, and literally just say, I connected so much with you. And they ended up working with me. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to say it was the easiest sell ever, but it was just a natural connection of, I identify with you. And, you know, it's the people who you're meant to work with. And I work with Christians and non-Christians. I don't, you know, I don't promote myself is only working with one particular type of person but even the non-christians I, I was hesitant about bringing all of my spirituality to it you know whether it's about praying before session or whatever and the more that I let that go of what they're going to think um the better results they get and the you know the better results I get um you know the, the more people who are kind of drawn to me it's the right people it is the right people there's nothing worse and I'm sure you can relate than working with the wrong people <laughs> so it's like don't, don't put yourself in that position. Trust me. You don't have to just yeah. do up as you and the right people will respond. Yeah. It's so important. I think as business owners, often we think if we do really let some of that authenticity come through, which is so important because it really centers on our core values. We feel almost like there's a mask or only half of us shows up. And I think once we give ourselves permission to, to share who we are, as you say, people who have similar values or have a respect, a certain level of respect for that, in, in, in this case, of course, you know, people who, who don't uh, know Christ, then there's still that commonality there. They resonate with your message, who you are, your mannerisms and so forth. And as women, we do, we try and um, emulate others, I think, sometimes or try to be things that we're not. And that can really drain our energy, particularly if we're trying to be someone that is completely foreign to who we are. When you talk about authenticity, and I think you would probably find this with a lot of women, what are some of the things that you encourage in them to, to have the confidence to be able to just show up? Because there is that level of self-confidence that they need to have in themselves to say, you know what, who I am is enough. Mm -hmm. And I need to give myself permission to just be who I am and who we know that God's created um, her asked to, to yeah. be what sort of insights have you learned and maybe you can continue to share with your clients yeah I think you hit the nail on the head when you said permission I feel like so much of my job is just giving people permission to be who they are and it sounds you know so many most people when they come to me I'm saying 90 percent know exactly what they're meant to do know exactly what they desire to do but the whole back is the imposter syndrome who am I who am I to but it's not the right time. I don't have, you know, I don't have this in place or whatever it is. But most of it is really giving yourself permission to put you, I don't say put your desire first, because that sounds very selfish, but it really isn't because your desires are put there by God. And if they're ignored, that's when other things start leaking out. You know, it, it's, it's that whole kind of oxygen mask thing. You know, you put yours on first and then you tend to hear the, the child next to you or anybody else. So I really find that a lot of women, when they've come to me, they have just been kind of ignoring this part of themselves. And then if things start leaking in other parts of their life. They're snippy. They don't, you know, they're not responding well to their family or they're hating work. You're gritting your teeth. You know, there's real physical symptoms as well. You're not sleeping. Um, you're starting to resent things, things that aren't you. And um, so when they, when they kind of come to me, the whole thing about giving yourself permission is going, okay, let's get clear and you declare what it is you really want to do here. Don't forget about what you should, you know, the whole should, but I should be doing this, shouldn't I? I get that asked a lot. And I'm like, I don't know, should you? I think that word should is so dangerous because, you know, we've been told, well, you should do this and you should do that. It's like, says who? Mm -hmm. says who? I'm only answerable to God and my husband. You know, so don't, you know, when you get really clear, I think there's something so freeing and it's it's an unbecoming, really. It's like these layers of who we who we put on, who other people put on us. And it's like, God will strip you down if you let him and strip you down to who you're meant to be. And it is fierce. It is so incredible to me. And it's so, it's such an honor to watch women become who they are. Mm -hmm. And that's what it is. It's not about, you know, becoming somebody else. It's like, you have had this person in you since you were about five years old. She is there. She has been waiting to come out. Just say yes. Give her permission to speak. 
that is that's what it's all about for me and it's really exciting when they get to that point it is and I think you know once we do recognize the gifts the strengths the talents that um that we have and allow them to shine that then gives permission for other women to do so and I think when we come to that stage we realize that no amount of and what we call competition it's more about collaboration because each and every one of us has been given this unique lane this unique path unique skills and strengths to fulfill whatever purpose and whatever calling um, that he is destined for us and once we get to that stage we can just continue to move forward without distraction without disappointment without comparison so certainly uh, encourage women if they're feeling a bit stuck about you know that imposter syndrome to certainly reach out and we'll share how people can get in contact with you let's talk about a constant state of leaping and you've given an example already but why I want you to share a little bit more about this because you say it's the only way that you'll achieve the success that's meant for you sometimes leaping will be leaping sideways and then maybe even back a little bit before you go forward and so often we can use that as a judgment for ourselves that, you know what, this didn't quite work out, therefore I must be a failure. Mm-hmm. And that whole topic of failure, I've, it's taken me decades to finally realize that failure, guess what, is just feedback, it's just data. And you can learn and grow and use that failure as a stepping stone to the next level. But share what that means for you, because I think this could be so empowering for many women and men listening and watching. Yeah, absolutely. Look, you've, you've hit something right on the head for me right now. Um, this year, 2018, has certainly not been the year that I thought it would be. Um, it's It's been one of many blessings and many surprises, but um, I'm currently eight months pregnant. And my husband and I, um, we, we were living in London in May. We moved from the UK to Australia. He was offered a job. It all happened very quickly, all at the same time. Both were surprises, very nice surprises, but I had all these big plans in my business because I'm still fairly newish in it. Um, You know, and this year I had a very clear plan of what I wanted my business to look like and everything has changed, you know, or everything has been in some ways you think maybe put on hold or, you know, we've had to really resettle and I've had a, I've had a bit of a challenging pregnancy to be quite honest. It's a blessing, but it hasn't been, hasn't been easy. It's I'm sure a lot of women can relate to that. Um, And so having to, like you said, not put that judgment on yourself oh, you haven't, you know, you didn't launch that group program, like you said you were going to a few months ago or whatever it is. Um, so I think the the leaping, um, I think that you were kind of talking about before, it's for me, it went from, okay, starting a business, doing my first Facebook Live, you know, that these kind of, I want to say small things, writing for the Huffington Post, you know, pitching here, pitching there. There's no plateau. <laughs> I found and like you're so right so in some ways I kind of have taken a step back this year because I have something new I need to focus on and um, you know next year obviously will look different and just having to let that go and just be okay with where I'm at Mm -hmm. because there were a few months when I really was just like fighting against it and going no I can still do this I can still do this I'm really running myself ragged when it was like and God finally said to me he was like I want you to focus on two things and they weren't exactly business related. They were related to a book that I've written, um, a podcast that I'm launching, but it was really stuff. He was like, so stop trying to do all this other stuff because mm-hmm. your ego is telling you you should. Yeah. So I think he really touched that when he said, sometimes it's taking a step back or a step, you know, to the side and it's just being where you're at and being okay with that, mm-hmm. you know? So no, it wasn't in my plans, but it's in God's plan and it's working out to be honest. We, we are so blessed. Yeah. Um, but the business ambitious part of Rachel wants to go, no, no, no. I have a gold checklist for January, 2018. And I, gosh, darn it. I want to get there. But actually that's when you really have to take a seat back. And that's also when your body will tell you this isn't working. If you, you know, this isn't working. There are lots of signs when you're out of alignment with God's goal for you for that season so I've had to really I've I've learned a lot about surrendering and patience the last uh, kind of six to eight months Mm -hmm. so um yeah I guess that's it it's really just to give yourself freedom to be where you're at Mm -hmm. and not let your ego get in the way because that's when for me I know that's when my biggest kind of that's when burnout comes out that's when I start resenting things that's when I start to not be my nice Rachel self Mm -hmm. Such a great reminder for all of us. And I think, you know, for each and every one of us, whatever that is, like whether it be a trigger or or something that challenges us against that identity, I think it's when we're mindful of that and aware of that, we can make sure that we have in place things that will support us. And I think if you look back over times where you did need to slow down, where you did need to focus, refocus from the normal 10 things that you might do to say two, 
you really can then see God stepping in often. And whether it be that there's a new strength or a character that he's developed in, in you, but even doors can open when we get to that stage where we're not consistently striving all the time, but rather surrendering and just trusting that what you're doing in that season of your life is the right thing. Have you found that to be true too? Absolutely. And one of the things that, because I, I've, I have a Facebook group and I'm usually very active in it and do a lot of Facebook lives. And there was a time when there was a few weeks when I just wasn't engaging at all the way I normally would, because I thought, what am I going to share? And all I could think was, I was like, Rachel, all you can share is what's real for you right now. You know, I, I really try and be authentic with my, you know, with my group and everything I'm doing, because I was like, I really don't have anything business wise I want to share. So I just started showing up and going, this is what I'm going through. It's really hard. This is kind of what I'm learning, but I'm still in it. So I don't exactly have the solution for you, but this is where I'm at. And so people just started coming out of the woodworks, which has been really incredible to me. So I've been connecting with people on a very different level. Um, and so that has been really nice. And so right now I'm not selling a particular program in the next couple of months. You know, I'm heading into the maternity leave time, um, but still showing up and going, I don't know if this is going to help anybody, but I just want to be real with you about where I'm at. Mm -hmm. And so that has just been for me a different level of connection and engagement, which has been really beautiful to see. Mm -hmm. And, um, and also it's given me freedom to kind of work on these other say side projects that, you know, God has told me to do. And, and it's just, it means that the business for me right now, it's about connection and engagement and collaboration. Like you said, mm -hmm. gives me time to do these type of things. So it's, it's really just kind of, you know, reframing it in your head, but also me just going, you know, what, it's okay to show up. And not have all the answers right now. It's okay to show up and go, this is a bit tough and I'm going through it and I want to share this with you. So people have probably engaged more with that as they usually do. Like, I love it. I love it when people show up with their stuff. I don't always like showing up with my stuff, but you when know. Just yeah. doing the, the showing up. Exactly. From, if you draw back to your experience in the, you know, the, the, with the TV stations, mm -hmm. you know the importance of that storytelling the real authentic storytelling where you're speaking into something that you know so many other people are experiencing yet may not be at a stage where they're able to voice it. Now, if you can capture that in your message and then give people some hope and possibility, even through just sharing your journey, that is a foundation that only time can build. Yes? Absolutely. I think storytelling is the most important thing you can do in your business doing, you know, and doing it well, um, but doing it in a way that is real for you. And it can be, it can be quite confronting. And I've worked with, you know, my clients on that. Some of them have never done Facebook lives before or anything like that. And I think there's sometimes this misconception of you have to put it all out there when you don't, you know, there's a, there's a few things I don't always share, um, but you do need a level of, why should I listen to you? What makes you different? And the things that we are usually holding back are the ones that you need to, people need to hear more than anything. Mm -hmm. And, you know, particularly when I was trying to kind of ignore what was going on with me, you know, physically or whatever, or what else, when I finally just said, guys, I'm pregnant, this is happening, I've been sick, blah, blah, blah. I mean, people just wipe off. And you're absolutely right. I think storytelling, telling your story, your things that you talk to your girlfriends about that you don't want anyone else to kind of know about, you can touch on that without exposing yourself. There are ways to do that. And I think that's some of the misconceptions people have that you have to like Kardashian it all up. And I'm like, you don't, you know, you get to choose how much you put out there and, you know, how much you want to relate to people. But I think now, particularly in marketing, people are craving authenticity and I, it, it's such a buzzword, but I really do think that it's like the more of you people see, I'm telling you, the more your platform will grow, you know, the, the more your brand will grow and you will connect with the people that you were meant to serve. Yeah. One of the things that one of my mentors explained to me, and this was a, a couple of years ago, and it was really true. There were certain things that I was experiencing, yet I was still going through the healing and the journey. Now, whilst I was able to express some of that, she said, the real message in the story, keep that for when you have gone through it. Because sometimes, and this is where we need to, and it's a thin line we know, is that sometimes the expression needs to be put in a journal rather than out, you know, to other people. And, you know, can you share a lesson in, in that? Is there some insights, even if it's one or two small things? Because then it really focuses on, yes, you're authentic in your storytelling, but there's also an opportunity for growth for someone else. Otherwise, yeah, as you say, it, it can be something that you really you want to keep for your girlfriends. Yeah. A, a, a journal if it's too. And, and that's where you would, work with someone such as yourself who's able to discern this is a really good story and capture it that way 
uh, this, not so much. <laughs> it's out there, it's out there, isn't it? Yeah. It's true, it's true. And I had, um, late last year, we had a few family tragedies happen. Um, we had three family deaths within a month of each other. Um, I, I had a miscarriage coming on a plane from a funeral. It was one of those, it, this all happened within like a week. And it was one of those times, and I had to go straight back into working, into working with clients, into, into the business, basically. And I remember at the time thinking, what, how do I even process this? How do I, you know, what do I do? What do I say? And I wanted to show up and say something, but I wasn't sure. So I just showed up and I said, We've had some family, um, some family events happen. And, but you know what, here's the silver lining that I can tell you about right now. And it was really just been able to be there with family and connect and all that stuff. I didn't say anything else for months. And months later, after the grieving had happened, after the processing of it had happened, I was able to go, this is what happened. And this is how it was. And this is what kind of happened as a result. So at the time I shared this much, I shared something's happened. It's not great, but this is where I'm at. Just so you know, I'm not disappearing, you know, kind of thing. And then months later, when I had really taken the time and processed it and grieved it and had, you know, had some real lessons in there, I was able to comfortably and uh, share it with stability, you know, share it with emotional stability. That word really sometimes yeah. so raw still. Yeah. Exactly. So there, um, but it is, a, you know, as you said, there is a fine line. And I think um, one of the things I do work with my clients on is establishing what are you ready to share? What's, you know, what's complete for you that you can share? And what are you still going through? Because that's really important for you and your own healing. So I think that's a, that's a really important point. Yeah, great, great. So let's share with people, Rachel, what's the best way for them to connect with you? Maybe for now, connect with you on your Facebook group. What What are some of those details? Yeah, absolutely. So I have a Facebook group, which is just for women at the moment, called Life on Her Terms. Um, my website is lifeonherterms.com or rachelreva.com. Um, and I'm also on Instagram, Rachel Reva and Life on Her Terms. I also do have a public Facebook page as well. So, you know, anyone can like that and you can see what I'm up to. So that's it. Fantastic. One of the things that I'm doing for all of my guests, uh, Rachel, is just to finish the show with a word of prayer. May I do that for you today? I would love that. Thank you so much. Okay, let's pray. Father, thank you for the opportunity to speak with Rachel today and just hear the insights that she has gone through, that she has learned and that she's now really sharing with other women. Father, there can sometimes be so much pressure and expectations that we put on ourselves, yet knowing that you are such a loving and forgiving father that Really, all you want is just our time, our time and attention. And when we surrender to you, that is when real miracles can happen, when the Holy Spirit can work in there and uh, really just open up all sorts of possibilities and opportunities that would not have been possible. Father, will you just continue to bless Rachel in her pregnancy and her husband, the work that she's doing, will you continue to draw near to her um, so that she can continue to really feel your presence as she's in this season of motherhood. Father, we just want to ask this all in the precious name of your son, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you for coming on the show. Continued blessings. This whole journey of motherhood, this is, there will certainly be lots of leaps and bounds. Let me just share that. <laughs> lots of lessons oh, I can share. <laughs> You'll have lots of stories to share, I tell you what. Um, you. And speak truth and love and, and light into all of that too. But look, thank you so much for coming on the show been my pleasure. Thank you so much, Anne-Marie. You've been listening to the Christian Entrepreneurs Podcast, brought to you by podcastingwithpurpose.com. Stand out, be heard, influence. Want to influence real change with your own podcast? Access our free podcast training, including no-cost and low-cost tools and podcast production workflow checklist to get you started at www.podcastingwithpurpose.com forward slash mini training. That's podcastingwithpurpose.com forward slash mini training.